Your DSLR is an incredibly powerful and complex device, but how much of that power are you leaving in the hands of your camera? Is your camera making the big decisions or are you? Hello, my photographer friends, and welcome back to my channel. Let's dive into today's lesson, shooting modes. Higher end DSLRs and mirrorless cameras are gonna have a number of modes that you can shoot in, but which one do you choose? I'm gonna break them down for you really quick in this video. And guess what? These videos are completely free because it's YouTube. But the only thing I ask is that you hit that thumbs up for me. It helps me so much as well. Let me know in the comments down below what mode you shoot in. I'm genuinely curious. First up, auto mode. When you shoot in auto, basically what you're doing is you're taking a step back. You're taking your camera and saying, here you go, make all the big decisions for me. The only thing you have to do as the photographer is decide what your subject is, point your camera in the right direction and shoot. Although you will never see me shooting in auto mode, it's actually an incredible tool and it's wildly sophisticated in its technology. Take your smartphone, for example. It's incredibly good at taking really good photos all on its own. In fact, I'll often suggest auto mode uh, especially to newer photographers or someone who's not very familiar with the settings of your camera. Um, for example, when I'm shooting a wedding and I have a newer assistant with me who's wanting to get good photos in fast-paced scenarios without having to worry about all those settings, I'll tell them, shoot in auto, just have fun with it. You're gonna get some good shots. I personally don't shoot in auto simply because I do have that knowledge and experience to be able to adapt quickly and change my settings accordingly. But as well, I feel like shooting in auto um, to an extent kind of limits your ability to be creative. Maybe the way that my camera wants to take the photo isn't the way that I want to take the photo. I guess basically my camera's not the photographer. I'm the photographer and so are you. I suggest if you're new to photography, start out in auto mode so that you can get an idea of the art of photography and start to unravel what your style is and what kind of photography you're into. And then after a while, switch over to manual mode, play around with the settings, and it's going to unlock a whole new level of creativity. All right, that brings us to the next mode, my personal favorite, manual mode. When shooting in manual mode, you, the photographer, are in charge of every aspect of the photo to get the right exposure and look. You're gonna be in charge of the ISO, the shutter, and the aperture. By the way, if you guys aren't familiar with those three terms, you can have a look at this video. I go super in depth with them and they're very important to understand. Now it's important to know that when you're shooting in manual mode, it's really easy to overexpose or underexpose your shots if you're not familiar with how your camera works and how ISO, aperture, and shutter speed can affect these. As well, it's easy to get lost in all of these settings. But the more you shoot in manual, the quicker these settings are going to become second nature to you. There's also some great tools that you can use to help get that correct exposure when shooting in manual mode. One of these very useful tools is the exposure meter. You can find this when looking through your viewfinder or on your LCD screen. To read this, it's super simple. Basically, the middle of this meter or zero is perfect exposure. You're going to get a perfectly exposed photograph. If you open the aperture, slow the shutter speed down, or increase the ISO, the indicator will move to the right, indicating overexposure. Basically, your photo is going to be too bright. And then to be expected, moving the indicator to the far left will result in an underexposed image. Exposure meters are a great way to tell if your photo is even gonna look good before you take your photo. Next up, let's look at scene modes. Scene mode is fairly similar to auto mode with the added element of being able to choose the kind of photo you're striving for, but still allowing the camera to do the work for you. There are a number of scene modes and they will all give you different settings based on which mode you chose. Some cameras are gonna have different scene modes than others and they're not always called the same thing, but to give you a basic understanding of some of the more popular ones, check this out. Here are a few popular scenes that your camera will most likely offer. For example, landscape mode will give you a smaller aperture for a bigger depth of field and increased saturation. Portrait mode will give you a wider aperture for a smaller depth of field, as well as muted colors to preserve the skin tones. Sports or action mode will give you a super fast shutter speed and a continual focus for subject tracking. 
close up or macro mode will give you a small depth of field and a high shutter speed to minimize the camera shake. Basically, there's a mode for every type of photo you wanna take. If you wanna take a picture of a beautiful landscape, you're gonna choose the landscape mode. And if you wanna take a photo of a person, you're gonna choose portrait mode. Next up is program mode. Program mode is basically just a step up from auto mode. It's still gonna choose your shutter or your aperture, but it's gonna give you more option for specific parameters. These are gonna include things like ISO or metering or white balance and something called picture controls or picture styles. These styles are gonna give you a number of options to choose from, and then it's going to alter your sharpness, your contrast, and your saturation. Now, just something to note, these program styles or program pictures are specifically designed for JPEG files. If you're shooting your photos in RAW, and just a quick note, if you don't know the difference between RAW and JPEG, I got you covered. I did a video last week on it. It's right there. But if you're shooting your photos in RAW and you're hoping that these picture styles are going to come out with your parameters changed, like your contrast, and your sharpness, it's going to completely wipe those because RAW files have no processing done to them. And picture style is basically an in-camera processing. Honestly, if you plan on editing your photos and you really should then just don't shoot in program mode. And the final mode we're gonna look at today is priority mode. Now there's two modes within priority mode and that is aperture priority and shutter priority. It's pretty straightforward. In aperture priority, you're choosing the aperture and the camera's gonna choose your shutter and then vice versa. If you're in shutter priority, you're choosing the shutter and you're letting your camera choose your aperture. The problem with priority mode is it's really easy to choose an aperture or a shutter speed that's not ideal for the situation. For example, you might choose a shutter speed, but your camera might not be able to match that with the aperture. You might end up with a really overexposed or underexposed photo or a lot of blur or noise. One way around this would be to set your ISO to auto. That just gives your camera one more exposure option to adjust. Basically, it comes down to this. When you're shooting in manual mode, you're giving yourself the ultimate amount of power and freedom to take the photograph exactly the way that you want it. When you're shooting in auto, you're basically giving all that power over to your camera and saying, here, do it for me. And every other mode is just a different variable of auto mode with a little bit less or a little bit more power given to the camera. Personally, I'm always gonna shoot in manual, but that doesn't mean that the other modes don't have their place or that the other modes might not be perfect for you. For example, a lot of professional photographers will actually shoot in priority mode and it works really well for them. They get awesome photos. But if you're new to photography and you don't understand every aspect of the settings of your camera and how it can affect your photograph, I would start with auto and slowly venture into some of the other modes and see what works for you. And if you want to become very comfortable shooting in manual, follow this YouTube channel because I'm going to drop tons of videos helping you do just that. As well, if you have any questions, you can ask me live. I go live on Twitch every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern where I edit photos and answer your guys' questions on photography. Also, don't forget to check out my latest video on ISO aperture and shutter. It's right here. And until next time, happy shooting.